Hi there everyone and welcome back to another A Must See Chess Game by Jose Raul Capablanca. So uh, Capablanca's masterclass continues. I have few more very exciting chess games to show you of Capablanca. Uh, I know in these days I'm showing a lot of Capablanca chess games but we can't get enough of them, isn't it? They are just simple, beautiful, easy to understand, uh, aesthetically beautiful, exquisite and uh, they are very interactive as well. So Capablanca was a genius, seriously. So this was from a chess simul, a 20, 20 board chess simul from 1912. And his opponent was, uh, his name was uh, Schrader. Uh, I forgot his full name. Anyway, it's not too important, I believe. Uh, so he was a chess master. Uh, he competed in some important chess tournaments. So this is from the Western Open chess tournament from uh, 1914, which is the 15th US Open uh, chess tournament in, Mem in Memphis uh, from United States. So he actually has managed to won one of these chess tournaments. So he is the gentleman from the far left, uh, as you can see in this picture. And uh, he was also a painter, portrait painter mostly interesting and he was a professional chess player uh, so he was a serious player and this is the picture of the uh, for, uh, 1914 uh, 15th US Open chess tournament so he was basically a serious player for that time and look at their clothes they look they all look pure class so different than today isn't it uh, it was a different world back then uh, things were completely different back in the day uh, now people look so different, their, their clothes uh, and everything looks so different, isn't it? It's as different uh, as the difference between planet Earth and Mars. <laughs> the other thing which is pretty different is that uh, I see a lot of old chess players, lots of elders, uh, not elders maybe, but lots of chess players, especially in the front row, uh, chess players in their 50s, 60s, even 60s, uh, maybe. But today in top level chess competitions, we can see a lot of teenagers, even in their early teens, like 13 years old or, or even younger. So that's also one of the other difference. The chess players back then at top competitions were older, maybe. Uh, okay, uh, anyway, an interesting picture from the good old times from uh, 1914. Uh, but there was also a world war back then. Uh, that's not very nice. Uh, so, okay, this chess game was played uh, in St. Louis in the United States. And this is a must Capablanca chess game. Sorry for the chit chat. Uh, let's begin. E4, C5, the Sicilian defense. And Capablanca plays the wing gambit, B4, which is uh, accepted. So, A3 and Capablanca is very aggressive. So, we have B5. A takes on B4 bishop to b7 and bishop takes on b5 uh, and black also captured on e4 attacking on g2 so capablanca is interposing with the knight e6 developing the knight attacking the bishop and of course there is no time for capturing this pawn so if bishop takes knight queen takes bishop and also attacking the rook so bishop to b7 defending the bishop and then capablanca castled knight to f6 rook over and now Capablanca is defending the b-pawn. Black never wanted to capture this pawn and developed his knight because it would give Capablanca the open file, maybe. It would be it would give some attacking chances. Developing the bishop and then d4, queen to c7, defending the knight, castling. So both players has managed to castle. Sometimes in Capablanca's chess games, Capablanca's opponents can't even castle as he was so accurate. So knight to c6, knight to e2. And bishop to d6, remaneuvering the knight, uh, knight to g4, and then c3, cementing the d and the b-pawn. So we have f5 and queen to c2, activating the queen, and then knight to e7. And Capablanca played a very good move. He played c4 using the pawn majority in the queen side, so he can also push the c-pawn push the d-pawn, so he has some pleasant choices in this position, and we have knight to g6, 
Capablanca decided to play d5. So black is getting closer with the knight and Capablanca is marching, so it looks dangerous. Uh, he can also push the c-pawn and squeeze his opponent, but he decided to play d5. So e takes on d5 and look at this position. After c5, black has three pawn islands. So there are lots of weaknesses and in potential endgame, this is going to give some edge to white. And Capablanca only needed a small edge for winning any chess games. Uh, so we have bishop takes on g3 h takes on g3 and then knight from 6 to e5 and we have bishop to f4 pinning the knight but black can play knight takes knight pawn takes knight both attacking the knight and attacking the queen so if knight takes knight that's check so maybe black has to go back with the knight but it is going to be a very annoying pin so we have d6 and defending the knight and if capturing the pawn maybe exchanging the queens comes to mind maybe or maybe actually a queen takes pawn so anyway uh, we have bishop takes on f5 and also attacking the pawn so knight takes check but after capablanca captured back this is attacking the knight so knight to e5 and capablanca of course black is defending i mean let's take it back I skip a little bit too fast. So this is also attacking the d pawn and attacking the knight. So if bishop takes pawn, that's forking queen and the rook. So there is threat uh, a lot of places on the board. And black is defending interposing with the knight, but simply bishop takes on h7 and it doesn't look very good if king goes up a black is losing according to the computer chess engine white can even check the king with the queen so we have king to h8 and then king to g2 defending uh, f3 so d6 and liberating the bishop and attacking capablanca is defending but after d3 this is a little bit tricky so white has to be careful but capablanca played rook to h1 he was not born yesterday so in this position, of course, I mean, it is very obvious. If bishop takes on d3, then bishop takes on f3. That's check. And this is very unpleasant for white. So after king to g1, queen to d7, the queen is going to visit the king and defending is not possible. Actually, in this position, black is winning easily. So of course, Capablanca was not a petzer. So after d3, he played rook to h1. So you see... You can see the importance of playing king to g2, multi-purpose move, both defending on f3 and clearing the path for the rook and the h pile is open. So this is a very dangerous position. Okay, so what else? We have king to g8 and then what's next? Well, Capablanca checks the king and saving the queen and this is a very nice tempo move and this move is winning. So rook to f7, but not blocking with the knight. Actually, if blocking with the knight, can you see what happens? Then bishop takes on d6, forking queen and the rook. So also attacking the bishop, there is threats everywhere, disaster everywhere. So black has to defend the queen most definitely. And at the same time, black might want to defend the bishop. But you can only defend the bishop with moving the queen to a light square. Uh, so let's say queen to d7 and it is white to move what would you do in this position white has a winning move it is very simple actually okay bishop to h7 and this is the only move and then bishop to f5 that's check to the king and also winning the queen so this is why this is a very difficult position rook to f7 not knight to f7 because of this disaster knight is pinned so Capablanca played this very important move, a very important life-saving tempo move. Rook to f7 and then simply, again, what would you do? It is white to move. Not every move is winning for white, so you have to be precise in this position. Okay, c takes on d6, of course. Threats everywhere. So attacking the knight, attacking the queen, attacking the bishop, and what else? Defending the queen, but simply boom. Bishop takes on e5, and black tried 
his best, uh, his very best. Bishop takes on e4, and this is a little trick. But Capablanca played, I mean, before showing Capablanca's move, of course, if capturing the bishop, then queen takes on f2 is unpleasant. So king to h3, and this doesn't look very nice for white, of course, but this is still, by the way, winning for white. Uh, but this looks annoying, of course. But Capablanca played after bishop takes on e4, not pawn takes bishop. Some of you might say, okay, this time Capablanca ruined this. Maybe this time he is not going to get away with it. This time. This time he is in trouble. <laughs> what would you do? Capablanca played the move and black resigned. Rook to h8 by Capablanca and Schrader resigned. One time a US Open, a one time US Open chess champion. And he resigned because of this possible continuation. Black is actually getting checkmated. Only move and then queen takes on f7 and how to defend the checkmate threat on g7. There is no defense in this position. So uh, the computer engine says actually bishop takes, king takes, queen to b7, exchanging the queens and prolonging the torture. Or queen takes on f2, king takes and actually there is no defense in this position. Only for prolonging the torture. Black has some uh, meaningless moves. So there is no defense, that's what engine says. And if you ask what happens if rook to g8, then rook to h1. The h file is extremely handy. So bishop to h7 is the only move. And then rook takes on h7, kaboom. Only move and black is getting checkmated. And this was the final blow by Capablanca, rook to h8. And it looked like a knockout punch in a heavyweight boxing contest. Watch this move. Amazing, isn't it? This move was amazing. Rook to h8 and black resigned on the spot. What a game by Jose Raul Capablanca. His chess games are simple, instructive and beautiful. So, okay. Uh, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time with more instructive chess games. Stay safe, take care and bye bye.